Eddie is the only only person on my list that's alive that I haven't worked with. It's Eddie Murphy. That's one guy, like, and I can't wait because I'm like, look, I know you work with all these other young niggas, but I'm the nigga. You work with me, that shit gonna be some shit, Playboy. Ooh. Oh my God, that scared the shit out of me. Yes, sir, and we are back with another great episode of We Playing Spade. And today, we got a special guest, man. Oh my God. I look at him as, as OG. Um, been doing this thing for a long, long time, man. I'm talking about uh, big movies, man. Stand up for years, man. Changing the game for my generation, yeah. man. And have a great conversation with him. And also spank his ass. And, and, and Spades, I don't know if you know how to play, but we're going to see today. Motherfucker might be funny. Now, he funny as a motherfucker. And I'm going to welcome him in. Let's just start clapping right now. Time. Comedian, actor. The only one, the one and only, Lil Rail in the building. Big Rail. All right, first of all, thank y'all for having me here. But I had to bring my partner in crime. Uh, we host a podcast together called Keeping It Real with Young Wayne. This is my boy Young Wayne, aka Dwayne Young. Cause I'm saying his full name. I don't care if don't you don't want me to do that. Why you doing this that? dude is my partner. We here to kick your ass. That's right. That's right. I like his shirt, man. He looked like he came to play. He I, like he managed me. I, <laughs> no, that too, for sure. Managed that that too, and he looked very professional. No, he's like a youth pastor, too. Manages, he said youth pastor. Yeah, he like a youth pastor, for sure. Like he, he, he joined the choir, and he, he changed his life. He got his life together. You know, he used to have the King Von dreads, but now he got the regular dreads. It looks amazing. Hey, we're going to give him you. Hey, look, y'all. We're going to give y'all these black cards. Mm -hmm. These black cards is for people that's player, that know how to play spades. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't talk across the board. Yes. Renee get yes. caught cheating. Yes. And we playing ace high. Yes. Meaning is that ace is the biggest card on the board. Yes. Then the king, the queen, the jack. Y'all know how to play that way? Let's do it, man. I'm sure real. I'm sure real know how to play that. I'm okay. We don't want to take them black cards. But just don't take the, as long as y'all don't talk across uh, the table, I think y'all be like, oh, okay. I don't think y'all going to renege or do anything. I don't like But like y'all can talk across the table. No, we can't say nothing. Y'all no, can take our card too. Right. And before we start, man, we're going to salute to a, uh, yeah. a great game. Um, I ass whooping to you guys. And ass you know, whooping success. to new friends. Man. Salute, man. Right. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> I'm very competitive, though. It's your go. We are too, man. It's your go. We're very competitive as well. This is called talking across the table. We can talk right now, but once the game get going, we can't, <laughs> we can't talk about that I, no more. I, can, I, I know how to talk cross that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan, of course. You know, a lot of people, um, I would say, first tuned into you when you was on Get Out. I think Get Out was one of those movies that mm -hmm. actually changed the game for you. Do you feel like that was the movie that really put you out there? Of course, you've been grinding for years, man. Like, you know, and do you feel like it take time? You just got to be patient for that right opportunity, that right light for you? You got to be ready, and then you got to learn to speak stuff up. I remember sitting in the movie theater like, damn, I need to be in one of these in one of these trailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can keep talking. We're we going to spank their ass quick, That's though. what you think, That's fam. crazy. That's all good. <laughs> hey, how was it shooting that movie, Bad Trip? That was crazy. That was That's like, your funny as it's, fuck. It's, when you do um, those prank movies, yeah. You don't know what the reaction going to be. So, like, the first day I quit, actually, because we almost oh, got stabbed. Oh, wow. The first day we did a prank, we had to, uh, you saw the movie, right? So, you know, we had did the Chinese finger trap with our dicks attached. <laughs> I mean, that was the first I'm, prank we did. <laughs> we ran into, I told him, I said, man, this is the hood. Yeah, you don't prank hilarious. black people. So, we walked in there with our, our dicks connected. <laughs> nah, and the nigga was like, hey, man. You didn't see it? I don't know. Did you see the movie? I saw no, it. I it was on Netflix. Damn, he looked he look uncomfortable. But I, I mean, that's, no, what, that's what the I prank seen was. It. I seen it. I seen <laughs> that shit. It wasn't our real dicks. It yeah. was fake, fake dicks. But niggas was so mad I'm, about I seen that. I said that. It was I fake dicks. I, like, I saw it. So saw it. it was a dude. We walked in a black barber shop. The nigga was like, hey, Mal, I ain't playing with that fuck shit. <laughs> Ran to it. It looked like he was looking for a gun. And then he grabbed his, you know, the blade. I'm running full speed. I'm where like, where I y'all shoot that at? In Atlanta. Oh, I run up the barber shop. I seen it on shop, I, man, it. I fall I on the ground. Yeah, it's 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 yes, it's we, went the, we went yeah. to the wrong barber shop, so right. our security wasn't even in there. And so this nigga really could have killed us. Now nah, facts. And so I was like, I quit. Damn, I walked all the way to my hotel with the dick dangling, <laughs> the fake dick. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I want to do this shit no more. <laughs> <laughs> I got a career I want. And I walked back, and but anyway, I came back because Tiffany thought it was funny. I thought it was fucking hilarious, but. Yeah, I had to really, I had to stop being myself, so I had to just become the character and not rationalize anything, or I wouldn't have been able to finish that movie. Facts. So I had to just act like I was the, the character, because that shit was too crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I, I remember all that. <laughs> it was a crazy fucking movie, right, you know. Yo, who just threw that? It's your girl. Okay. That's what you. But back to Get Out, though, man. Like I said, that was one of those movies, man. Like, how was that process? 
You know, who would you <laughs> up against of competing with in, as far as auditions? I was like, when I left the first audition, everybody was sitting out there. And I remember, if I could be honest, thinking like, ain't none of you niggas booking this. And you, you knew that was the movie that was going to like actually put you up there? <laughs> nah, actually. Ooh. Another question, man. Who you feel like, you know, gave you your big break? In, in the industry, man, who gave you that chance? Who really believed in you, you know, as far as like being in the industry, man? Because it, I feel like, you know, when you come into the game, you know, it, it got to be that one person that, you know, believe in you. Because a lot of people be like, okay. There was a lot of people that believed in me, though. Oh, wow. And so, like, you know, shout out to Sid, the entertainer. Shout out to Mary Lindsay, the own jokes and notes. Uh, my first manager, Knowledge Beckham. All the comics in Chicago that I became friends with. Uh, Bill Bellamy. That was a village, bro. Damn. I knew they had it. Yeah, Bill. Bill was a big supporter. Mm. Damn, they fucking us up. And the interview with you nice. and Bill on that on break beat, I saw that too. That was a great interview too. You know, it's yeah. sur- it's and it's surreal. When I met him, I was like like still a kid in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Doing who got jokes. So, mm-hmm. mm. all right, man, it's time. I guess it's okay. Well, you, it don't matter what you, you throw play out. That club. It don't matter you what you throw out. You cook. <laughs> You got a spade in the club. Go it ahead don't and play that club. How you talking to me like that? It don't matter. <laughs> I love you, OG. He my OG, but I, I love him to death, buddy. It don't matter right now when it comes to this game. I swear to God. Play that motherfucking card. Go <laughs> throw it out. It don't matter. It don't matter. I'm, I'm going to come on top every time. I swear to God. No, no, no. I'm not going to do it. He got a club, and you have to play your club before that's a day. Oh, come on. Come on, man. I want to take three books and you lose. Oh, like, I got to take that. Oh, I'm wow. not spamming nobody. Yeah, like, the next segment is called Renee. Renee, right? So in your career, have there ever been anything that you feel like you would want to take back in your life? What is something that you regret doing? It's a lot. I mean, not in career. I think life shit, nigga. I, I, we all made dumbass mistakes. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny? I probably never publicly talked about this. Like, I got it to only one real, I guess, big. I, I, my, t- my first TMZ situation was... Yeah. Was when um <laughs> my homegirl got I had up like remember my homegirl pulled off left me there by myself so I had to fight this big nigga Ooh. that whooped my ass for trying to sue me. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, big white guy and shit. And so like what I regret is I wish I would have just I wish I would just stayed in the car. Hilarious, because <laughs> <laughs> I got out the car to defend her and she drove off. Yeah, I, I was like her. wait. Oh, that shit was real. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. it really happened. And so, like, that shit was real. And it was so crazy because, like, I, I mean, now I, I like beat the case and all that shit. And so mm. it, the judge looked at this nigga like, "Come on, man." Uh, but anyway, it was so I regret that just because it's like it was so stupid. Mm. I really should have played that cooler. But I try. I knew he wanted to fight me. You know, you little than somebody like I'm gonna hit this nigga with all my might, and it didn't do shit. <laughs> 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 I think I hit his shoulder. <laughs> well, he was from Tennessee. No, Chicago. <laughs> so oh. this is in Chicago. This nigga worked for uh who you work for Papa Jazz at the time. It was so crazy. It <laughs> oh, was that so, was Chicago. It was, it was Chicago. Yeah, it was Chicago. some crazy as shit. And I remember the police showed up and I was like, Oh, I'm glad to see y'all. And they took they arrested me. Like, nigga, look at my glasses. <laughs> he won. <laughs> What the fuck you arrested me for? Is Bernie Mac from Chicago? Motherfucker, he is from motherfucking Chicago. Okay, I want to make sure. <laughs> Bernie uh, motherfucking man. Yeah. Whoa, so was want? was that why no, you... it was slippery? Uh, was he? Did I just do this right? I, I look. I, I, I've never done that part of spades. <laughs> that I part of spades. I never done that part. Fuck of spades. You, you my partner. Nigga, you're supposed to last. But I ain't never done that part of spades. Cutting. So we up one. <laughs> We got one right you now. You picked a good partner. Bernie motherfucker, man. I, I, so man. was he one of your inspirations growing up, you know, as far as comedy? 100%. Yeah. I just did, uh, I did the Cubs, I threw out the first pitch of the Cubs game. Oh, nice. And did the seven in the stretch. But the whole time I was thinking about Bernie and Matt, because that was one of the first comics I saw from Chicago do that whole seven in the stretch thing. So it was, it was. It was a big deal for me to be there. Looking back yeah. for that, Paul. Well, what's up with these cars, man? Don't worry about with the car. I'm dealing. Yeah, where y'all get these? And he bro? cut them too. So these it cars ain't, ain't real. It ain't just me. You saw your man's cut them. Don't get mad at me. The I Lord guess. is blessing me <laughs> right now. Oh, right oh yeah, now. I know he got a good hand in. I know he got a good hand. He sound like my grandma, man. <laughs> Whenever she playing space, she get to sing and she, she got a good hand. I, I, hope, I hope he got a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a hallelujah. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yes, sir. Let's see who play their hand the best then. So how was the com you know, the comedy uh movement and you know growing up, man? When when did you start? I started early, man, like ninety nine, two thousand around that time. Nice. And so so you, like, you like twenty almost thirty man, years. Man, twenty something years ago. I was nineteen when I started. These damn. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. I really the last regular job I worked at I was twenty one, I worked at Victoria's Secret. Mm. I was a stock room nigga that stayed outside the stock room. 
Dang. <laughs> <laughs> hanging out on the floor. Like, I was dressed up. Nigga, all the other niggas was dusty. The guy had a whole suit. Yeah. Like, nigga, you ain't even working on the floor. So, you know, me, me being from social media, man, mm-hmm. you know, um, taking, you know. But the, you're great at it. Like, yeah, you're, you're, you're one of my yeah. favorite, like, in, like, and I really mean this shit. It's fucking, it's legit. I think I told you this before. What, what were we at? We were in, was it the DR? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the the first conversation I had with you, bro. I was out here and um we was in this club. It was like a lounge or something, but they were doing open mic in there, and you was just back there chilling. And I probably did like seven minutes or something like that. And after I got off stage, and he was like, "Man, I, I I support you. I've been watching you. You just like keep doing your thing, you know." And I, I don't think it was a good night for me, like mm. with those seven minutes. But you came up to me after the show. You was just like, "Hey." <laughs> hey, don't worry about that. Keep doing your goddamn thing. I've been seeing your videos, shit like that. But right. you gave me that that confirmation. You know, I mean, I followed you on the ground. No, you are you, you know? brilliant. And then, like, what I respect about you, and I, I, once again, I think it was a DR. Yeah. And I was just like, hey, fam, look. Uh, oh, yeah, I, it was it, it was another DR. Yeah, and we had a long, I, it's just the respect of, I, I saw how much you respected the crowd. Mm-hmm. That's y'all, man. Go on and take it, Playboy. <laughs> No, I, just, I want you to acknowledge it was, that. I, you know, you, you truly, you know, everybody else kind of, and some people just go up on the road because they're popular and they're doing all this shit. You actually work on your material. You're actually really funny. You know mm-hmm. the structure. Like you, DC Young Fly. Mm-hmm. Um, what's my homeboy name? God damn it. Country Wayne? Uh, well, Country Wayne, mm-hmm. but also um, Ryan. Ryan Davis. Well, like, that's, my, that's my dog. Brown. Rito Brown. Like, yes. those, those, yeah. like y'all my favorites because mm-hmm. I know how much y'all, you know. Come on, man. Oh, well, no. Nah, nah. Come on. Let's get this. Had no more cauliflower on your hands. Let's just get this. Let's just take this one. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's what I wanted. No way. Let's okay. go. Okay. 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 Question. Will we, will we ever be able to get to see you in like a, in a more um, a sh- historical role? All that like, shit. Well, if you could, if you had. I'm about to tell you. Because, well, first of all, Poker Face, I could talk about that because that was something before we went on strike. That was a, that was a drama, right? Yeah. Which was like yeah. me being a bad guy. Mm-hmm. And so the stuff I can't talk about for real, it is leveling up. Not only. With the roles, my roles behind the scenes. So it's stuff I'm like, I'm starring in now and producing. The producer shit was already on me. I, I did that with my specials, mm-hmm. fucking rail, my, my sitcom, all that shit. The sketch series, mm-hmm. all that was. But this shit is next level. So mm-hmm. like, because that eventually for me, I would like to have my own studio and not just production company. Mm-hmm. I look at somebody like Tyler Perry where he's very inspiring as far as like, um, shit. Damn, man. You know, I was asking. You give me like um Come on, man. like Tyler Perry vibes. About that. Don't worry about I give you Tyler Perry vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It better be a compliment, nigga. Yes. No, I'm joking. With those <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Wait, yeah. who who put the nine out? I did. He did that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, we ain't sparing um, nobody. Huh? We ain't sparing nobody. Why I say that? Because to me, I can see you playing different roles. Like you, the kind of actor to me, in my opinion, that you can't get stuck inside of a role. You gonna go before like me? Like dead oh. ass serious. You like, went first. I mean, it's stuff oh, yeah. I've done yeah. where like, you know, I, you can't put me in a box. And that's if people look at the body of work I've done already, none of that shit is really the same. And so mm, literally. It's it's one of those things where like I think I'll probably get credit. I looked at this year as a year for me to start getting credit for things, but I don't I don't know what the fuck is going on. Your that's fucking stand up game is it. fucking crazy. All of it's on the level. Like, okay, okay. I've okay. done I've had my own sitcom. I've actually done more shit than niggas we put on these pedestals. Mm. And so like I'm there. It's just it's catching up with the money. Mm-hmm. Them niggas is wealthy. Yeah, I'm rich. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be wealthy. Yeah, and that's a big fucking difference. Facts. Yeah. Big facts. Yeah, man, we might be cooked. <laughs> you know, might be. Well, t- <laughs> hey, look, I I tell you this, OG. Right, I I think you're a project. You're not your comedian. You're not the comedian. That's your job. So, and that's a successful job that has been proven over the years, making seven figures yearly. Yeah, but that's why you learn. You, you, I know no, where you're no. going with this too. Now watch what I say to you. I know where you're going with this. Well, I'm going because because this is what I want to say. This is why I started Relevant Productions. I started that shit a while ago, and so that's what I'm saying. Nobody's paid attention. Even my fucking my the symbol for my production company is me and my kids because I'm trying to show the generation okay. of wealth. Oh, so I just threw the alley hoop up. And yeah, you just called it and said it. I that's didn't want to be the guy nah, looking it's, nosy. It's, it's what it is. Thinking I Google shit. But that's why I love it about Nas. Like Nas is who actually put my like when I had my my first deal for my first special, our special was with HBO. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I went with them over Netflix is because I said, hey, I would like to give my children producer credits. Netflix said no. HBO said yes. Mm-hmm. And that's why I went. Now Netflix offered more money. 
but I didn't give a fuck about the money because I wanted them to have the credits. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. it's their production company. Yeah. I tell them kids all the Long time, like, this y'all shit. Mm. And I'm only starting this company not just so you can stay in entertainment, just so you can do whatever the fuck you want to. Mm. We can really start doing this shit independently for real. It's about like, it's about Wu Tang and this shit. Like, if I saw Adam Sandler and all the rest of these motherfuckers do that shit with their companies, I just don't see that enough out of us. Sorry, fellas. We won that game God too. Damn it, man. Yeah, no, nah, y'all are Nick, so we got like all those people. Yeah, that's, that's why y'all, you know, you lucky this is a positive <laughs> spades game. Damn, we really, if we, we, we still win at the same y'all. time, I'll be, ah. be mad as fuck. Ah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this? Where's the fish? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> you come from that baggy jeans era. You don't come from a skinny jeans I come from, era. I guess it's all the, so all those eras. That's that, I'm in that in between era any fucking way. Like, okay. where you like, like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's a weird, like, you can watch my comic view sets yeah. and the outfits are totally different from for the sure. first time yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. The first time I did, I had a headband on, one pants leg up, a Wu Tang shirt, sure. Wu Tang chain, yeah. all that stupid shit. Hmm. And then you, the last one before it came out, it was like, oh, now I have like a blazer on, a for sleeve sure. rolled on. <laughs> no, for sure. But nigga, I had a head, I thought, I was hoping Ghostface saw me on comic view. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even lying about that shit. Like that's when you can wear brands on TV and shit. I literally had a Wu Tang shit. I was such a huge Wu Tang fan. X. You Which definitely fact? met Wu Tang, by Oh, fam. When I one of my favorite moments in life is Chicago All Star Weekend. Mm. I'm coming in from one of the parties and shit. I got my little fur on. Guess who in the lobby with his fur on? Who that? Ghostface. Wow. Me and this nigga drank in the lobby for four hours. Wow. It wasn't even no bar in the lobby. We just people was going to their rooms. We were just sitting in front of the elevator getting fucked up. Wow. Talking shit. And I kept doing his ghost face voice. He just he kept making me do it. At first it was funny, but I'm like, nigga, I ain't gonna keep talking like you. <laughs> <laughs> he kept making me do this shit. Right. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm a huge Wu Tang fan. Fat, fat, Have you ever had a moment? Of course, in the beginning, what? Have you ever? I ain't gonna say boo. Or have you ever had a bad show, <laughs> nigga? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Everybody yeah. does. And well, what do you do when you have those shows? Like, how? What is your process after that? It's. I, I remember the beginning of the game, which I could have quit, was when okay. I did my first like. You got a go ahead, give them the cards. First club, club. We'll play all three games. It's just okay. Like, yeah, we we want already. Right. The conversation is great. Yeah, we just yeah. playing, just yeah, to talk, right? Yeah, but yeah, I got booed. I, they, I, my set was so bad. They. That's when the, my DJ friend now, who's one of my friends now, but at the time, this I was is... having a bad set. He played Someone Please Call 911. Oh, my God. Damn. You want to say <laughs> Nigga, to get me off stage. My God. That's kind of what you said, You told me when I did that show. At, uh, it was like four years ago. Like, I was out here. It was like seven. I did okay. It was in the lounge. He was like, yeah, man. Um, you know, I've been on, watching you, man. Man, just keep on, man. Keep God first, man. Just keep on. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't like bad. It was, but you know, when a, a great comic come up to you, it uh, wasn't bad. I got laughs. Hmm. I was still figuring things out, you know, with certain things. And he came up and said, hey, man, hey, it's going to be all right. How you come up with the material that you come up with? A lot of that shit is freestyle, too, right? So, like, when I go on when I, I'm, I'm usually motivated by my openers, mm -hmm. which is why I like to have really strong openers open for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of get the energy of what that is, and then I just let it flow. Yeah, and, you know, I'm, I just mostly, I go, I'm good at freestyling until hey, I figure bro. out what the set is. Fuck. God, you mm. kidding me? I got to call you OG, because you OG. Um, but we're gonna mm. push a bid in right now. That's right. what we're gonna do right now. And yeah, what can we expect from now and the next two years? Uh, another great stand-up special. This the next one I want to do is gonna be different from the last. The last one I did at Chicago Theater, so it was big and all that shit. This next one gonna be a lot more intimate. It's almost gonna be like a one-man show in a way where like I'm I'm gonna dive. I'm gonna dive a little deeper into you getting to know me and just a lot of things about me. And so it's I, I'm already I'm already personal like that, but like this is gonna be like like Gerard Carmichael, one of my good friends, challenged mm -hmm. me in that way, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, this one gonna be a little little deeper than uh, and, what and, you see. Um, how many specials do you got out, out right now? Shit, let's see the two HBO relevant, um, the albums. I did two albums. Total of five. Wow. Boom. <laughs> Damn. Damn. So I got a question for you, real man. Yeah. You know, you're a comic. Um, who are your top four, top five comedians that you watch, that you study? Like, you, you know, Easy. think it's your style or whatever it is, you know? Eddie Murphy's number one. Mm -hmm. Told you. And this is, and, and is going to be a very honest and real number. Eddie Murphy, uh, J.B. Smooth. We talking about people I JB is yeah, and like I learned how to milk a joke watching JB and being committed to a bit and falling in character. That's mm -hmm. that's 
He's the greatest person to learn that from outside of Eddie. <sighs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry it's, it's about it. I know. I know. And, uh, We're rocking you. them like a thank baby. Thank you, gentlemen. Man. We take this one. We're taking this one home. Take it to the Chicago. <gasps> take it to the shop. You know how we do. We'll throw it out there, Playboy. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you got, yeah. ain't, ain't, well, I, ain't I told y'all, y'all. Are you going to sip to that? you going to really sip Jay to that? Smooth, Cheers, Eddie huh? Murphy. Oh, Eddie Murphy, J. Smooth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Eddie Murphy, J.B. Smooth. Um, and I got to ask somebody recently who I think is probably one of the greatest to ever do it Wanda Sykes. For sure. I've watched it. Yes, one of, one of yes, the greatest yes, yes. to do it. And Bernie Bernie Mac and Robin Harris is this weird tied thing. For, for sure, for sure, for sure. But the thing about but what puts Bernie over the top is my acting side, too. Do you? Because he's a fucking under, he's one of the most underrated actors of our of Do all you feel time, like Bernie, Bernie learned from Robin? You know what's funny? I think so. Because it was Cause a time, it was a time where people that. wanted to compare them to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. But then when you watch House Party, both of them, you, could you imagine? Because he plays his brother. Yeah. Both of them in a scene together would have been fucking absurd. Yeah. I even think about Soul Man, even though Samuel Jackson was great. Could you imagine if that was Robin and fucking Bernie? Yeah. But what was what was the movie know, um, with, with Spike? What was the movie you, with you, Spike you, Lee? It had Spike Lee and, and Robin damn. was in it. Oh, yeah. You're talking about uh, Mo' Better Blues. Yeah. He was fucking But great. it was like, you saw the Bernie Mac. But well, of course, Bernie Mac studied from him. Well, you Bernie know? Bernie talks about seeing Robin in his last show at the Regal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, went yeah. to that show. That, yeah, people. Robin died in Chicago in the hotel. Oh, after I that show, he had a heart attack. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so Bernie say he watched one. Of his, like, yeah, those are two. Like when I say two of my favorites, it's the way I host comedy shows and do certain things. Mm -hmm. It's from the Robin Harris Bernie Mac school of comedic hosting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The niggas just, just can go up there and just fucking go. Yeah. And Robin was fucking genius as that. Like, dude, if you watch the first house party mm -hmm. and that classic house scene, it's two classic scenes. The house scene where you like, follow the drip. Yeah. Like, test two, baby. <laughs> yeah. It don't even look like yeah, he wrote sure. that shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, he yeah. was just roasting yeah, these yeah, niggas. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could tell how the yeah, way yeah. they was laughing yeah. and shit. <laughs> yeah. And then when he talked shit to the police, when the police was fucking with him, I don't yeah. give a yeah. fuck. Yeah. Kept my cock's ass. That's right. what like, it's, it looks so real. And so right. like, then you saw Bernie do it. But this is where we didn't get a chance to see with Robin. But Bernie, <laughs> we saw his dramatic chops. So when mm -hmm. you watch Above the Rim, mm -hmm. you, you know, at first he's playing a guy mm -hmm. like talking mm -hmm. shit. And mm -hmm. then that last speech mm -hmm. he gives after they was fucking with mm -hmm. him was fucking deep. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, it, it, I study this shit. For sure. And so like, you know, that's my, those are my top four. But like even comedic actors, like my top comedic guy outside of Rob, uh, uh, Bernie and Eddie is Robin Williams mm -hmm. for me as an actor. Mm -hmm. Because that's the silliest motherfucker we've ever seen. But when I tell you he can have you in tears watching what dreams may come and mm. fucking good morning Vietnam and dead poet society. Like I'm such a crazy student of this shit. Mm -hmm. I'm a fucking, like, I have a, I feel like I got a PhD in comedy and acting because right. I study yeah. this shit. And yeah. now like I want to direct now. So like my eyes, even on some whole other shit, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So whenever you're ready to put me in a movie, man, let me yeah, know. All right. let no, me that's, know. Yeah, that's like, it's, you, yeah. I have a list of people, like it's things, I'm, other things I'm about to do. Yeah. That, that's all birthing from relevant productions is, mm -hmm. that, what, is what I'm excited about. Yeah. And it includes you and a lot of other comics that I really fucking like. And yeah. so it's going to happen. It's not even me just talking like yeah. we're sitting here. I think it's one of the reasons why I want to do this because I respect you so much. So Thank you, bro. Um, even just the road, the, the tour, like the comics I have opening for me, is, I'm actually going to use mostly female comedians mm. um, just because they don't get a lot of opportunities to feature a host like that. Or like with I guess a bigger name whatever the case may be mm -hmm. and so it's gonna be fun and shit man I just been studying everybody I'm talking about even like George Lucas is like my new favorite motherfucker Jesus Christ he's fucking brilliant this motherfucker is, he, he made up Star Wars no, he made that shit up no for sure and now it's just this kajillion dollar worth thing that he sold mm -hmm. and he's still in charge of that shit that shit crazy that shit crazy that's fucking insane yeah I, I just wanna say bro school, like, right I we're feel like you're, you're one of them ones too Mm. And even if you don't get that respect from a lot of people, I, me being a student, you're one of the ones. I watch your specials, man. I see it. And, you know, I'm still learning and growing myself, but you're fucking killing it, bro. It's be, be, a, killing it, be bro. a student of this shit. If yeah. Whatever we pick to do, I don't care what it is. Don't like, don't go into it like you know every fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And so, like, just being a student is so important. For sure. And taking in information from people. For sure. No matter who it is. Like, and honestly, just especially with all of us being brothers here. <laughs> Niggas listen to black women. They are the lick. They know every, they know every fucking thing, mm. especially in this fucking business. Mm. 
I'm I'm not even just saying that on some cap shit, like for real. Mm. Like the Issa's, fucking Ava DuVernay's, like the advice. And if I have a real question, that's who actually picks up the fucking phone. Niggas ain't gonna tell you shit sometimes, Fact, especially uh, if they want to. They think we we competing with uh, each other. I respect for sure. My mo- my mother is my biggest. My biggest like she like the realest. Like I ask like why I could no fuck no. Da, 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 da. I'm like God damn. I love that story. Yeah, I, she I tell read me about always you and the truth. Like, that's brilliant. always. That's like she. Uh, it's just different. That's my mom's man. That's 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 my best friend. Yeah, but she, you know, what's dope about her? Like, I, and I, it's is this a, this a real respect? I'm glad you're sitting there because I read about that and I thought that was so cool. With like, she's such a good business person. Yeah. And my mother, she showed me the the whole humanitarian part about life. Like, the more you give in, because I guess like where we come from, it was it was, it was crazy, and she was like the who she was and she just my mother was just into just giving back giving back and giving back and I seen with my naked eyes what giving back what the rewards from giving to people can can be so all my life I like shit I'm just gonna give so no matter how big I get I'm gonna sit and do a podcast because you never know like game from you Lord knows your story like your route is crazy mm-hmm. like you had to come through with in our community called white comedy you know what I'm saying? You well, had to shit. be the cle- Now you had to come to niggas first, right? right. Yeah. Like the hood. No, no, I'll talk about in today's time. So, so here we go. In today's time. But I'm glad you shit. said that. Because I think sometimes people think, and it's it's not even just me. I even I've heard people say this about Hannibal and different people. None of us pick our fans. I am from the west side of Chicago. Mm-hmm. I would love it if it was just the You've been over Raymond's or Madison and Central? Nigga, yes. Well, that's my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> that's them. Boy. It, it, we don't pick our fans, fam. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the blessing of it. I think, honestly, what makes my story unique is that wasn't my intention. I think that's the good thing, even the way you're talking about your mom. Doing shit with good intention makes a lot of sense. Whatever's for me gonna be for me. Mm-hmm. And I'll be ready when I get that fucking call. I'm grateful that I'm able to do like movies like with Ryan Reynolds and Cena and all this shit. That's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. I like I can't even describe it. Every time I've been called, I've been ready. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Oh, well, you chose God, man. Always. You got a light spirit. I'm gonna be honest to you. Hope y'all could get what I'm trying to say. When you meet people, that's like what they call famous or they put on. I don't care what the age is. You could feel the, the weight on them. Mm. And some people that don't got weight on them, it let me know, like, wow, this guy actually took the hard way. He took the godly way. So a lot of people, in, in that essence, have a hard time with having patience and waiting. Mm-hmm. So when you say, oh, these last six months have been crazy, it's because these last six months have no pressure no more. And, and, and for and me, that, I, I, I feel the greatness, bro. Facts. I've been taking a lot of compliments from people lately, right? They'll be like, oh, real? Hey, you look great. You done lost this weight. You done did this and did that. And I'm like, why everybody so focused on something I ain't give a fuck about what nobody thought? I did it for myself, right? Going to therapy, all this stuff. But then I had to like, I, and this is real talk. I remember like God yelling at me like, like you look, you're happier. Mm-hmm. That is that is what's shining on you. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you've you figured out, like I ain't taking none of this uh, shit too fucking serious. Mm-hmm. I'm like happy as fuck. Right. Another thing that, that's a part of my happiness is my family. Like if, like. Like seeing my like me and my son this summer really hung out. He's thirteen. He's you know most boys are mama's boys at first. That's just what the fuck it is. But me and him a lot of like, and we like hung the fuck. I almost like felt bad because I'm like, is this nigga my favorite kid? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> because we hung out all the time. We hooping. We playing pickleball. He'll get a workout with me in the morning. We'll just take drives places. He help me with the garbage and shit. He's cleaning up. He he has. He's so <laughs> That's fucking. Into- me. <laughs> Man, he cool as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so like. And even with my daughter, her, you know, she's getting her, she's in her teenage years and she's becoming this young woman and she got her, her, her clique she run with. Just watch. How old is she? So the kids are 14, 13, and 6. So my <laughs> daughter's 14, my oldest son is 13, I know and the I baby is 6. I 14 year old in social media. Well, era. But it's the 6, yo, that nigga is, that nigga's a, I'm 43, man, <laughs> with a 6 year old. That's a lot of energy I ain't got, I don't have. <laughs> well, just one more question. I'm going to bring it back to the, to the comedy, man. Do you feel like his levels? You know, of mm. course, you got the, the Dave Chappelle, you got the Kevin Hart, you got the people that's at this high pedestal, yeah. you know, and you, great. Do you feel like it's, it's levels that you're still trying to get to as far as comedy? I think, you know, I, you know, I'm so honest, but <laughs> it's a lot of self, it's self-proclaiming now. Mm. Niggas is calling themselves the GOAT. You can't call yourself the yeah, GOAT, yeah, You're right. Yeah, exactly. You're weird. right. Yeah, you don't you're call right yourself that. the GOAT. Yeah, you're right about Eddie that. Murphy is the GOAT, yeah. and he has wow. never said that shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Michael, sure. like even Michael Jordan, they ain't never really, they ain't said it. For sure. Mm-hmm. The people chose him. Yeah. 
the people chose them. And so, sure. like, I, that's why, I like, for me, I always love the term, I want to be considered one of the greatest to ever do it. And yeah. I think I'm such a student of it. I feel like maybe in the next couple of years, maybe that's a bit when you ask me. You that, know what I mean? You that's a conversation I kind of see. I, I don't want to say this. I, I see me and you, uh, you and me. I, I kind of like, that's, that's I, I fuck with that, man. I'll never forget. I saw. Like, I, I feel like he's fucking dope, but a lot of yeah. people don't feel like but he's fucking oh, okay, dope in his fucking industry, yeah. in his that, fucking world. It takes, you know? it, it takes time, too. Like, I ain't never been in no rush for that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, I think a lot of times people want the props. I'm glad that I can, I'm comfortable. I'm not struggling. Like, that was an accomplishment first. Well, yeah, I didn't have right. to tour. Yeah. I can do this shit when I fucking feel like it. Facts. That's how great things have become. I can go do stand-up when I feel like it. Mm -hmm. This right. shit was the only way I ate for a yeah. long time. Facts. I get that. I'm, I come from a social media perspective and it's levels mm -hmm. to the social media. Okay. It's a lot of people that do that shit. Okay. Okay. It's a lot of people that say they quote unquote comedians. Mm -hmm. They're comedians. But when it comes to, okay, you're a comedian. Now, when you want to be in movies, you want to do the real shit. Now you got to do the real shit. It ain't a lot of people on social media doing the real shit. No, that is You can count on your shit. hand right now. Who's doing the real shit? Well, you know, some country Wayne did something that's really interesting, right? Is is by funding and producing his own movie. For sure. And to me, like, and it's so interesting, like, because I think he's one of the smartest cats I've ever talked to, too. Mm -hmm. But then also, I think one of those things is, too, like, it's about learning. I keep saying this to everybody. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you know, you, I tell you somebody who studied this shit. I have, too. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it's, if you truly study it and you want some of this shit, just... Literally just ask, first of all. Right. Yeah. I think some niggas became rich before they got the information. Facts. And, and so and, like, and, and, and that's so they don't know the thing, what to do with man. That shit. I'm telling yeah. you, that's yeah. a fucking thing with a lot of people from social media. They got this big following. They they, they don't know what the fuck to do for real. Yeah. And when it's time, they ain't put the reps in. I knew what I wanted in the beginning. Mm. I knew I wanted to be an actor. I knew I wanted to be a comedian. So I knew I had to study mm. the motherfuckers that did it before me. I had to be a real student of the game. A lot of people, when they're famous, they just want to be famous. Yo, y'all got something in common, right? With, with, with rappers, that I say. Because I, I feel like I'm not a rapper because I can't rap. I'm just a good entertainer. Oh, oh I don't need nigga. Listen, I'm going to. I don't want to give you props. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I enjoy it, right? A, I see one thing that we could dish you. It, it's like y'all, it's like you're kind of uncomfortable to accept props and love. That's one. And two, mm. y'all. Do something that I see artists do, where and because the people is doing it, and if and it's forcing the artists to think like this and the entertainers to think like this, is y'all getting it confused from inspiring comedians to actual comedians? And what I mean by that to define it is an inspiring comedian and inspiring rappers are paying money to get paid off the dream they want, and a comedian and a rapper is actually getting paid off of it. Mm -hmm. So the guys that rap. Or the guys that uh, do comedy is watching the guys that's inspiring and seeing it win. And now they get so much hype and notoriety that the guys that's on start trying to copy them and go back, give back to the hood kind of thing. And I think that... You can't do that, though. But hold on. I, I just honestly think that some people got to recognize their shoes. That's why people feel like it. And some and y'all, too. For sure. Y'all just yeah, need it, to it, recognize. It, yeah. Like, hey, I'm glad but, you do it, though. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. I watched you do it and Desi doing it. So it's no, just I'm amazing saying, to I, see y'all like, like doing it. You come up in our group text. Well, well, here we go. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, but, you, but no. Desi, no I'm, I'm, Desi, as far as comedians, that's good. Because I want you to see this, too. I did. And this one Real shit. I did have to learn to embrace that shit. Yeah. It was uncomfortable at first because the reason why it come with a setup. Well, <laughs> it comes with a setup, but also I actually really love this shit. It's about intention. Some people have come in. I don't care if it's fuck if it's hip hop comedy. Some people did get in this shit for the bread. Once they started uh, making money, that's what it was. Or sure. they saw that was a come up for this guy, and I could do it this way. Not me at all. This a nigga who stole Richard Pryor's book from the library. Mm. Walked out. The alarm went off. It was an old lady walking out with me. They grabbed her, and I kept running. Wow. <laughs> she still shit. Because <laughs> I thought I took all the alarms out the pages. <laughs> it was one page I didn't get to. Nah, that's <laughs> but because I was so I was so engulfed in studying this shit because I loved it so fucking bad. I'm such a student of it. Like I'm such a nerd of it. Like I, I, I think about like even when I really started making real money from it, I didn't fucking care. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it for that. Yeah. I love this shit. Yeah. Like I fucking love it. Now I've been blessed because of my love and my gift for this shit, but like I could take the love and the props. I think one of the things that's interesting is, but it's just, it's about business now to me. Yeah. And that's the one thing I've been focused on and the content. 
I truly care about what the fuck I'm putting out. I could put out a bunch of bullshit and it'd be a lot of it and I can't do that. That's why if you go to my IMDB page, every movie I picked, I'm fucking proud of. It ain't a motherfucker I ain't did where I didn't like the script. And I've said no to a lot of things Mm -hmm. that I've seen get made like, yeah, I knew that shit was going to be that. This is, this is, this is not good. And they're like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I can't do this with these people because I'm, I'm not going to be able to shoot this without being irritated. I've shot things where I, I probably have annoyed a director or a producer or two, but I'm like, you said I'm, I'm the funniest nigga in this movie. And none of y'all do tell jokes. And you telling me this is funny? I'm not saying this shit. Mm. And guess what? You know what we can do? Let's go on stage tonight. If you have a better set than me, mm. I would do whatever the fuck you want me to say in this script. Ooh. Ooh wee. <laughs> so don't tell shit. me what's fucking Jesus. funny, nigga. And Facts. I've done that shit. Facts. That's just real shit. Facts. Unless it's somebody I really respect and work with, I'm like, nah. Like, and it, for me, that's a big deal is respect on the set. Yeah. That's why I love Jordan Peele so much. Shout out to Jordan Peele. Like, y'all passionate, man. That yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm learning. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get yeah. it. I fucking but get then, it. But I'll just say this real quick and then I leave it alone. When you said you could see yourself at me, I'll never forget when I saw I saw Kevin Hart in um like Gary, Indiana. Um, and you know, I know Kev, we was backstage. And for, I swear to God, for a moment, when they called him on stage, I literally thought it was me. Mm. Like, I saw, I, it's weird to say that. I saw myself like, oh, shit, I can do this part. Mm-hmm. I can sell out a theater and do all this shit. Mm-hmm. I saw myself mm-hmm. in that moment. Mm-hmm. And then that kept happening a bunch of fucking times. Yeah. I'll watch something like, hmm, even to the point who I work with. Yeah. Like, I knew I would work with Cena. I, Ryan Reynolds, weirdly, that was one of my favorite actors. I right. knew I would work with this nigga. Yeah. Eddie is the only only person on my list that's alive that I haven't worked with. It's Eddie Murphy. That's one guy, like, and I can't wait because I'm like, look, I know you've worked with all these other young niggas, but I'm the nigga. You work with me, that shit gonna be some shit, playboy. Ooh, that that yeah. that that, <laughs> and we gonna leave it like we gonna and we gonna leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Eddie's one of my favorite too, man. But I wanna say, man, thank you so much, man, for coming on, giving us gems, allowing us to whoop y'all ass. Uh, we won. We last, won the last game. We only remember the last. But we one. up. Nah, two. y'all remain. We just yeah, let y'all keep. Nah, I don't remember that either. No, you got your black card. It's on camera. Your black card fixed it. It's, it's, we got two up right here. Don't worry. Oh. You didn't help me. You. Thank you for that. But he lost. Give him his black card back. No, you gotta take that. You know what? The jewels he gave, you can yeah. have this motherfucker yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> it's all about. <laughs> nah, you can't have my too. <laughs> but no, bro, OG, I, I say OG, man, because you've been doing I learned from you, man. You've been killing the game. I want to say thank you so much, man, for coming on We Playing Space. I appreciate y'all, yeah, man. Thanks fucking, for having And me. I can't wait to see what you got in store, man. man I can't wait for y'all to see I want to be your set. friend, man. You'll be worth a lot of money. I'm glad I'm, co- I'm, glad <laughs> I'm a comedian. I'm and I can <laughs> talk to him. <them>, so. <laughs> I know what the spirit is talking like. <laughs> yes, sir, man. So y'all make sure y'all tune in for another great episode of We Playing Space, man, next weekend. It's going up. It's going stupid. Hey, shout out to Lil Real for tuning in and doing this thing, getting his ass whooped.